welcome to Trinidad, where it is very hot. I think the coolest place is here in the cockpit. <laughs> yeah, we've been staying in the shade as much as possible, but the people here have been lovely. We've been made to feel very welcome, so we're, we're enjoying our time. We are, and this is how we got here. I hope you like the film. Coming up, after 2,000 miles and two weeks at sea, we finally reach the Caribbean. Welcome to Trinidad, the best breakfast in the world. And a massive boat project for a family planning to set sail as liverboards. Sailing, rolling, the rhythm of our journey. In the last few days of our Atlantic crossing, we spend most of our time in the cockpit listening to podcasts, watching the waves, and of course, looking out for land. What a time for the wicked, the hungry and the brave. Ain't no time left to pretend. Now the breeze has dropped, we also risk playing cards. It's more difficult with the wind coming from behind. They tend to fly all over the place, but we have time. Time to relax and enjoy the slow motion of the boat, getting us ready for a new life in the Caribbean. What a time for the wretches, the hero never came. There ain't nobody out there like us, there ain't no two stones the same. I'll be alright. Well, the moment's arrived, look at this, that is Land ahoy under those clouds there. It is, and the sun's just disappeared. I hope we're going to get a good sunset. That would be lovely. <laughs> yeah, sunset over the land. We're going to be seeing it for a while, though, unfortunately, because uh, it's about 50 miles along the north coast before we can get round to, to where we're going to. That's the problem we're coming into to and Trinidad. The sun, this, uh, and the wind dropped, didn't it, last night? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> so, it's been slow going this last little bit, so yeah, eking it out. It's nice, though, because we've had such a rock and roll ride. Yeah. I'm quite happy just to be a little bit more gentle for the last bit. Yeah. That suits me. Yeah, hopefully <laughs> we'll lose lose all this swell by the time we get around the corner and then yeah, yeah we've got that got that 50 miles and we'll I think we'll probably get there about two in the morning so we'll have a little bit of a you know a sleep before we have to go and check in so so that's good. It will yeah. we've done it <laughs> <Well done. laughs> I'll be all right. I'd slow down if you told me it'll be all right. The first thing we pass is an oil rig and then a ship but before we leave the ocean, we must also show you pictures of our constant companions, the flying fish. What a time for the wretches, the hero never came. Ain't nobody out there like us, or are we on the same? Then the realisation that this is our last night at sea. There, in the distance, is Trinidad. Our journey from Cape Verde has taken us just over two weeks and now we're here, it's going to take another nine hours to sail around the island to Chagaramas to check in. As the wind has now dropped to nothing, we decide to stop for a few hours in Maracas Bay, where we anchor and sleep. The next morning, our new life begins. So this is it. We have arrived in Trinidad. This is our first view. It's uh, just after dawn. We managed to snuck into this little bay on the, the north coast. We lost the wind completely last night, so uh, didn't want to motor for the next four hours around the top. So snuck in here. Managed to get uh, about five hours sleep. We got in here about uh, one in the morning. It's now six in the morning. So yeah, which is by far the most sleep we've had in the last two weeks. <laughs> so that's good, even though we are rocking around a little bit here because it's on the north coast, you do get the swell in here. So yeah, we had to put up with that. But yes, how lovely, how lovely to be here. And all we've got to do now is go around the corner, we'll be on that side of the uh, island over there and uh, check in and go and explore. Now might be a good time to talk about our paid partner for this video, BetterHelp. 
We all know how important it is to be physically healthy. We go hiking as much as we can when we're ashore. We go swimming and I do yoga. But talking to other sailors, it seems very few of us are as careful with our mental health. And that's where BetterHelp can help. It's all online, which is essential if you're traveling and living aboard as we are. You start by filling in a questionnaire and then you'll get matched with your therapist, in most cases within 48 hours. You'll be able to schedule therapy sessions at a time that's convenient for you. If the therapist you're first matched with doesn't feel like the right fit, you can easily switch to a new therapist. So you're bound to find someone who's right for you. If you want to find out more, just click on the link betterhelp.com forward slash fair isle and get 10% off your first month of sessions. So look after yourself. Now back to the sailing. As we leave the bay, we feel quite refreshed and relaxed, but there is one small challenge on the way to Shagaramas. Boca de Manas is the main channel through the west coast of the island, and it is quite rocky and tidal. We're just coming through the Boca de Manos now. There's, there is still a bit of a tide, but nothing like as bad as it was last night. So we should be, we should be okay to get to the anchorage. And then we're going to check in. It is quite a process in Trinidad. So we have to start by, by obviously calling up and then photocopy everything. That's what we're told. Lots of, lots of paper, lots of photocopying. But it'll be fine. We're in the Caribbean, so, so who cares? <laughs> Winter sun. We're doing back to life. Can't find our electric pump. <laughs> Which in this heat is, uh, is a bit of a miss because this is hot work, it really is. Once you stop sailing, warm when you get here. I think that's the problem, isn't it? You put everything away safely and then you can't find it when <laughs> yes, you stop. Yeah, it's hidden in the mist of the boat somewhere, but it's fine. We just need to find it before we do our fenders, before we need to actually go in uh, anywhere to a dock. But yeah, we've got to wait for the health authority now. We were told you're supposed to call them on the radio, but apparently that's wrong. Uh, so we've called the uh, marina here and they're going to sort it for us, which is very nice of them. Powerboats Marina, who we're staying with later. Um, but yeah. They told us to get dressed, so you've got to put some trousers on. Yeah, I've got to put trousers on and a, and a proper shirt. They like those sorts of things here in customs. I, I'm sure it's a, it's a, a throw down from the old British days, all this weirdness of <laughs> <laughs> stuff to wear. We've only got ourselves to blame. Our trip to customs begins well. We manage to get rid of some rubbish. It starts at power boats where we pick up the paperwork, then to immigration and customs where they find a problem. So we go back to power boats and then back to the boat and finally back to customs. All in all, it takes two days, but at last we can start exploring. First things first, laundry. That does not look solid enough, does it? Just a green little token. It'll do it, I'm sure. Yep, that's it. All right, two <laughs> loads, then we can go and walk around. There are three large chandleries here. Budget Marine is probably the biggest. It seems to have most things, including Semco for our decks. Now that's a find. And in the evening, because it's Thursday, the many international cruisers here hold a barbecue. A wonderful way to begin island life. Well, it's another early morning. We tend to uh, be doing early mornings at the moment. It's nice though. We, we do, because it's not so hot. I was up at six and um, I wish I'd gone running then because I think the sun's coming out now. <laughs> I might regret this. <laughs> but we're going out to the front gate because you can get breakfast there. Breakfast is a big thing here and uh, they have some speciality. So we'll see what they've got. Most of the marina staff have breakfast here. The specialities are sahinas and doubles. So, so what goes in these then? Tell me, tell me, what, tell me what's yeah. in them. We have chicken peas. We have mango sauce, cilantro, cucumbers and coconut. Ah. Oh well, wow, So the cilantro is the stuff that's like coriander. We would think yeah. that it's coriander, yeah? Thank you. So this one's a sahina, is yeah. it? Yeah. And what's in there? The sahinas are made out of um, spinach. 
And it's the same dress as the doubles you have with the Nisahinas as well. So is this just a breakfast thing for people then? People come here for yeah, breakfast? Yeah, yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Have a good day. Okay, you too. Uh, so you're just getting ready for her run. I am. I'm going to sit here and eat my breakfast and wait for Budget Marine to open. Yeah, that's just behind us, isn't it? Sit there. <laughs> oh, Budget Marine, yeah. Budget Marine. There's a good path here, you can see, next to the road. So we should be safe. Yeah, it goes right the way around the bay. So yeah, good, good running track. Good running track. Right. After shops are on. <laughs> See you later. Bye. Right, now we have had one of these before, but later in the day when it was reheated, and apparently the Sahinas are best when they're fresh, so. I'm gonna try them. Mm. They're really good. Wow. The doubles was my favourite before but I think that sort of survives being reheated better than the Sahina. And they're right, the Sahina's really, really lovely. Well, we've been here for a couple of days now and we are settling into island life. We are eating well, as you've seen, and sleeping well, because sleep was, was an issue, wasn't it? Well, it was for me more than you. You're very good at sleeping, but yeah. you know, we thought before we left that we might need more crew to, to get more sleep, but that would have actually made no difference at all, because uh, because the problem was not time in your bunk, it was that I would go to sleep and wake up two hours later all the time. I was never getting a long, long sleep. You were managing four hours quite often. I was fine. I was up for my watches and then I went down to sleep and then during the day I watched the flying fish yeah. or read my book. But it was okay. I mean, I didn't feel particularly sleep deprived or anything. Uh, I mean, I would try and nap sometimes at night. I'd set an alarm for half an hour just to wake me up. It never actually did wake me up, um, so I wasn't deep sleeping, but I think I was just trying to, to nap through the night uh, out in the cockpit and that was, that was okay, that sort of worked okay. But the big surprise for me were the hundreds of flying fish. I mean, they were there mm. pretty constantly all the way through, and I thought they were birds to begin with. I was like, <laughs> see, there's a bird right out in the middle well, we, of the Atlantic. Well, we did actually birds. see, well, you saw several birds in the middle of the Atlantic. I did, well, I, I think they might have been flying fish <laughs> on reflection <laughs> but yes i think i think they were because they fly for such a long period of time and well done for getting those pictures because it's well, not it's, easy to film them no no they just come out of nowhere and they're, they're tiny they just yeah and they, but they go for you know a long long distance so yeah that was our entertainment as you can it see <laughs> watching flying fish playing cards um yeah we, we had a nice time it was okay you didn't get bored then i didn't get bored and here are some more fun statistics at the end of the last video, we asked you to guess how many ships we'd see on the crossing. The answer is two. Fish caught, also two. Distance sailed a total of 2,327 nautical miles. Time taken, 15 days, 12 hours, which is quicker than we thought because we were travelling at an average of 6.3 knots. Very fast for us. Now down to business. Card games 26 and we keep score 13 games each. Really, I didn't make that up. And crumpets made 25, all eaten at sea. Well, it's early morning, you see everyone is getting started in the anchorage. We're in the dinghy before seven o'clock. Absolutely, okay. seven o'clock start to go to the market. <laughs> Yeah, there's uh, a little bus, a mini bus here that the uh, people put together to get you to the to the market, which is nice and early, which is good because look, it's beautiful and it's cool in the morning. Perfect weather for shopping. Absolutely. And the Saturday market is amazing. The biggest avocados I've seen and pumpkins to feed the town. and fish, expertly filleted. We buy prawns, which we intend to cook for supper on a trip to one of the bays. There's a spit that comes right out there. <laughs> Oh, 
Lovely house, hey? You'd like to live there, wouldn't you? <laughs> That's pretty. Look at that. This is Morris Bay, popular with the local boats and a good place for a couple of nights. We don't see anyone. That looks delicious. Yep, so these are butterflied prawns. These are the ones we got from the market and uh, marinated them in some oil and some lime juice and some garlic and some of that um, herb that they use instead of coriander. It smells like coriander. It does. Hopefully it tastes like coriander. I put so, yeah, some of that in the salad as well. I'll sizzle them on there for a bit. Have them with your lovely salad, it'd be great. Here we go, finish off with a bit of garlic butter. Perfect. play is spotting the best holiday home which is what most of these are. Some absolutely gorgeous, others have seen better days, but all in a perfect location. Back on land and our friends have arrived. This is the boat they are renovating. They're renaming her Audrey Rose. So Jim, this, this is a beast of a boat, isn't it? Tell, tell what she is. So she's what, what size? She's a CT-54? 54. 54. That's 54. Correct. Yes. And that's, is that without the bowsprit? Because bowsprit's not on at the moment. Well, that's a question that we haven't taped it out completely yet. So yeah. it, she might be 54 with or without, we don't quite know. Yeah. Uh, but we tell, you know, we know it was listed as a 54, so that's what we tell everybody. I don't want to go longer and have to pay the extra <laughs> fees. So, no. you know. So. Excellent. And it's got the, the lovely stern windows that you, you see on these boats. That's going to be lovely, isn't it, in that? It, oh, we're, it was one of the biggest uh, uh, biggest features that I enjoy, yeah. Yeah, the galleon transom type of thing. And, and these were known as, uh, Bob Perry's the designer, these were known as Perry pirate ships. Yeah, yeah. And so this was one of his first designs. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, I mean, obviously, Perry's done some, some brilliant designs. And they're all this sort of, his early ones are all like this, aren't they? Full yes. keel. Obviously, the good things about this, a boat like this. It's like concrete. It's, it's solid, isn't it? It's it built, is. It's built really well, really and, solid. And but, but have you had any problems at all with, you know, if you're looking down here, were there anything you had to do with the hull or Nothing hull horrible. Or sort of uh, we did notice a very, very, some very tiny pox when we took the original bottom coat off. There were about four coats of bottom coat. Yeah. And so when we had the men take that off, we did start to see little little pox. So what we're probably going to do is do a peel also. Yeah. Probably just a, 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 a micro peel and then put an epoxy barrier and then go back with uh, the um, copper coat. Yeah, yeah. And, th and that's some sort of screw you got on the back there. That's, that's a... Yes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it, and, and, a until, beast. and until I can put a maxi prop on, it'll be like pulling a five gallon bucket through the water, I'm sure. Yeah. What's, your, what's your time scale? What, what are you thinking then for how long? I mean, you know, how long is a piece of string, but you, you must right. have something in mind. We're looking at, uh, we want to get in the water by November. So we're looking at, uh, you know, um, We'll see how everything goes. We're looking at probably another six more months yeah. at this point in time. Yeah, six so, months. That's we're hoping. Good. We're hoping. Okay. Yes. Let's let's go and have a look up top then and see what you've got to do in six months. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it, it would frighten me. I think. Yeah. Well, <laughs> it's, it's it's ambitious, but it's like we've got, we just have to push on. Yeah. Yeah. So. Now, so you've obviously you can see with the decks you stripped all the teak off. Yeah. Correct. I had them uh, take all the teak off. That yeah. was uh, job number one, and this is where we had the. Uh, the, the trampoline flexibility in yeah, the back and yeah. actually we have a picture of a tree growing out of the back of her. Wow. And um, so this was one of the biggest parts. This is the one that took the most epoxy. We were probably yeah. right around 40 gallons of epoxy just yeah. to get this back. Is this the bit that frightened you most when you surveyed this boat? Well, <laughs> I knew what was coming and so when I felt it I'm like, okay, it is what it is. Yeah, yeah. 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 And so uh, we, were, we, were, we were prepared. That was no surprise. I saw that going, yep, we can take care of yeah. that. Yeah, looking good now and you're going to put the hatch back in there. Correct. Yeah. A lot of room up here then, big, big dog house. Yes, lots, yes. Lots of space in there. Big the dog door. house was a modification. That wasn't something that was standard by... Uh, by CT or by Perry, yeah, and it was added, we believe, in South Africa. We're not exactly sure. Wow! And, and, and she's a catch. You got she is a catch. Yeah. And she's tabernacle mounted for the stern mast, and keel mounted for the main mast. Yeah. yeah. I had to have one piece of shiny teak to know where we're going, and so I had the boat shop redo this. It used to be wood strip with the black 
with yeah, the yeah, black yeah. in between. And since we'll never walk here, it didn't make sense for us to do that. So I had them go back with straight, straight grain teak. Yeah. And it's this lovely. is this is only four coats of varnish, so it's not even close to done. But it, <laughs> it at least was shiny enough to where I can look at it and go, that's where we're going. That's that's the direction <laughs> we're going over there. Watch your footing on the uh, supplies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's good though, isn't it? Nice, nice and wide. I mean, fairly, fairly steep companionway steps like ours, but. I mean, you come right down into the boat with these boats, which I like. Yes, it, it gives you a really nice, comfortable feeling. You're yeah. not up in everybody's view. You can, you can yeah. get away, and it, it gives you a homey, comfortable feel. Yeah. But wow. So you stripped all the headlining out. You had a termite problem. We had a termite problem twice. Uh, when I surveyed the boat the first time, <laughs> I didn't do a thorough job, and I missed it the first time. You don't often get that in a boat. And so we tented her and bugged yeah. it. And then about eight months ago, we saw some strange things and they said, oh, you have termites. I'm like, how can I? We, we got rid of them. And oh. apparently they swarmed, came down some little holes in the deck and started nesting all over again. Oh, no. And so we tented again. And this time we tented for a week. I said, leave it on for a week. I want everything dead. Yeah. And so, so far, knock on what's left of the wood, uh, we're, we're, <laughs> we're good to go. Yeah, yeah. But it's weird, they hit one and then nothing yeah. next. It's yeah. the strangest thing. But this is quick catching my eye in here. You've got a workshop. Uh, yes, yes, uh, uh, I think as you would say, a proper workshop. Uh, uh, it is a proper workshop, <laughs> so, it's absolutely fantastic. This was the first room we uh, renovated, basically, yeah. and the boat originally was designed with a double bunk on this side and a uh, uh, berth and a half on the port side. Yeah. And so when the boat was, one of the previous owners turned this into a workshop, and so that was actually a huge point for me, even though I would have done the same thing. It was yeah, just yeah. like it was there already. Yeah. So what we did since we were here in Trinidad and the woodworkers are great is we took the original teak top. And that's what this is. This is teak yeah, yeah. and sent it out to him and he skimmed it off and then built in all the new drawers for me. Yeah. So I have plenty of storage space for the tools. Yeah. We added the T-tracks. So now what yeah, we can do with the T-tracks yeah. is pull any tool out and lock it down yeah. and be able to use it as we need to and then move it and get it back out of our way yeah. when it's not when it's when it's in the way yeah. how has this been as a place to to, to get work done how's, how's it worked out for you it's worked uh, well I, I don't know if it's uh, typical because we went through covid we purchased the boat and then a month later the covid lockdowns hit yeah so a lot of stuff was done sight unseen and i had to trust what was happening um but after they built my bowsprit and mm. I was able to see the video of that coming back, I'm like, okay, we're in the right spot. Yeah. So as far as labor costs go, they're reasonable. It, it's, it's, it's good, good prices yeah. and the quality is good. Cause you want that balance, don't you? You need to, you need a you know, reasonable price, but you want the quality. Exactly. You you've got that balance here. Do you? I do. I do. Yeah. It, it, it's definitely sufficient. They, for instance, made these teak rounds to go, these used to be plastic. Yeah, and yeah, when they no. started tearing them out of the walls, I'm like, don't ruin those. I can't get those remade and I don't want to make them myself. Yeah. And so they made these uh, out of solid teak and cut yeah, them, trim them. And they, they actually fit so tight when I was putting them in today, I was having to use a soft blow hammer to get yeah, everything yeah. to fit. Yeah. So they do some really nice work. One of Jim's big jobs is the wiring. All of it needs replacing. And he's done away with the oven in favor of an air fryer. Good choice. And the deck and the rig two more big projects. Has it been what you expected? How out of control has it got the cost for the, the, the pieces? I'd say the out of control costs have been the COVID costs. Oh, really? And for instance, when we first priced out our 55 gallon drum of, of uh, epoxy mm. before COVID, it was about $4,000. Mm. And then when I needed it after COVID, it was $6,500. Wow. And then they had to find it. That was the other thing. It took them two months to find it. Yeah. And so where before it was just available on the island. Yeah. And so that's been our biggest issue is things after COVID uh, because people are still putting a premium on products being moved and even getting them into the country. Yeah, okay. And so that's been a challenge there. Yeah. Um, and, and, and within the actual structure of the boat, uh, you, know, you haven't had any expensive surprises then? Nothing really. The termites yeah. were a little bit of a, of a surprise there and that was a little bit of a hit. We might have to replace tanks. Yeah. Um, so we're undecided on that yet, and that's going to be a bigger hit than I was expecting. That's a little bit of a chunk. Yeah. But all in all, even when you wrap all that up, I still couldn't have bought new for what will be paid for the boat and putting into the boat. Yeah. yeah. And so, and that, and the other thing is, it's it's almost impossible to find a boat like Fair Isle or like uh, uh, Audrey Rose here that um, is as thick. Yeah. Nobody's building boats this thick anymore. Right. And our boat's 28 tons. You're 26 tons. Mm -hmm. 
and our keel weight is only eight tons. So the majority of that then is fiberglass. Gotcha, it's yeah. resin. Yeah, and yeah. so yeah. That's, that's, you know, I've heard of stories of people hitting a sunfish and sinking, and I'm not worried about that. In fact, I'm barely <laughs> worried about a Connex box. So, but yeah. that is a consideration. Yeah. The aft cabin with the galleon windows is going to be stunning when it's finished and the boat will have room for the whole family. Uh, when we were out uh, last January we had uh, four of the kids with us yeah. and um, one of the girls, her well two of the girls, their project was learning how to varnish and then polishing yeah, yeah. and so one girl just stayed down below and she was polishing the whole time and of course she was enjoying the attention of getting flirted with as all the, all the workers <laughs> were going by. And uh, yeah, but Becky did a wonderful job on that, and yeah. um, it's just time consuming. There's, you yeah, know, yeah. when you, especially when it goes from this this age, and then you, you know, you acid dip, and then you start yeah. to polish, and then you get to to fine polish. It takes a while to do it right and yeah. not ruin your glass and everything else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we have a long way to go on these, but that you know that might be done in Saint somewhere. You yeah. know, I might pop yeah, yeah. one off at a time and yeah. sit up in the cockpit and enjoy the weather and yeah. polish away. And, and what's the plan then with your, your many kids? You've got six children, yeah? We do have six, and, that's and correct. So one's, one's with, going to be with you full time. One's going to be with us full time. She is the namesake of the boat, and that's yeah. Audrey. Yeah. And uh, she has, uh, she has a trisomy 21. And so a Down syndrome. Yeah. And uh, so she is. Uh, she has already declared after her last time here, just a few months back. She says we're at the house, and she goes, she goes, mommy, I want to go home. And we're like, you are home, sweetheart. Yeah. No, my big boat. I want to go home to big boat. Yeah. And right. so she's yeah. already associating this with her new life that's yeah. coming. Yeah. Yes, she is going to be a beautiful boat when she's finished. But a lot of work, so hats mm. off to them for taking on a project like that. And there were a lot of people over there doing exactly the same thing. A big group of people that just come here to work on their boats. And it seems to be that Trinidad is a place to come to, not really to cruise, but to, to do that sort of work, doesn't it? It is, so we are going to join them. We are going to lift the boat. For us though, it's because of insurance. We are still not fully comprehensively insured because we haven't had an out of water survey. So we're gonna do that and get back insured. I mean, at the moment <laughs> we're on third party, crossing the Atlantic, no one would insure us. Yeah, we're not addicted to boat work, honestly. Yeah, we did intend <laughs> to go for a couple of years without uh, lifting again, but, but yeah, we do, we do if we're gonna get proper insurance, uh, get, have to do the survey. And it will be an opportunity to take the rud off, which I didn't do in Lagos, yeah. and pull the prop shaft as well. So we'll do that, but we will do a lot of exploring as well. It's a great place, this, isn't it? Yeah, so when the boat's out, we're gonna hire a car and we'll go and see waterfalls and humming birds and yeah. food. Trinidad's famous for food. Yeah, you can do a, have a whole day basically going around and eating different food around here. So uh, yeah, we're looking forward to that. So if anyone's got any comments on insurance, <laughs> are we going to open up the comments <laughs> oh for insurance? Oh my God, don't do that. It is, it is incredible. <laughs> it is an issue. But anyway, we'd love to hear what your thoughts are. Meanwhile, thank you to our patrons. Thank you to our subscribers. And thank you for watching. And if you want to become a patron, do join. <laughs> yes, thanks for watching.